Bertov. Today's daf Yomi is Abakama 116, but we're going to start on the bottom line of Babakama 115b. Today's daf Yomi uh, starts, we're starting really in Medias Race. We're discussing the issue of if you have wine, which is tame or oil, which is tame, and it was also truma, so you're not allowed to drink it. But you know how to consume it, but you're allowed to use it as fuel. The question is, are you allowed to leave it around, which you might come to accidentally eat it? That's called a takola. That if you leave around something which you can't eat, you might come to eat it. The so Gemara says, takola atzma tanahi. This idea about whether or not you can leave around the. Oh, you took the wrong one. Sorry. I'll wait for you, Meyer. Hold on, just kidding. Okay, so this idea. Hold on, it's right there on the side, right there. This idea of whether or not you can use the, it may come to cause you to mess up, is a machokas tanayim. The tanya we weren't in the brisa. Chavis shalyayin. Let's say you have a barrel of wine, and this barrel of wine was truma. Shinit mace. So this barrel of wine, which you're not allowed to eat, and it was truma, and it became tamei. Beishamai Omer and Beishamai's other position. Fish pocha kol. Beishamai's other position that you have to pour it out because you can't leave it around. You might come to to drink the wine. Beisol Omer Mta says zilaf. Beisol says you could use it as a perfume, so you could leave it around and use it as an air freshener. Remember Rabbi Shmuel by Rabbi Yosi ani achria. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Yossi says, I will be the one who decides between them. The bias that if it will be in the house, Taz says, Zilof. If it will be in the house, you can use, we're on top of 116a. If it will be in the house, you use it as fragrance. And Ubisada Tishbo Chakol. That in the house, since you're going to use it right away, therefore you can use it. But if it will be in the field, then you have to pour it all out because. And by the time you get home, you might come to accidentally drink it. Or Ikadamri, or alternatively, Biyashan, if it's old wine, which is immediately appropriate for fragrances, Taz says, Zilaf, use it as a fragrance. Ubachodesh, but if it's a, Ubachadash, if it's a new one, Tishpal Chakol, then immediately pour it out because by the time you get ready to use it, it'll already be, it'll already be um, um, over, it'll already, it'll take a while and you might come to a Takawa. So they said, This is not the definition. We we sometimes say, The third party shall come and decide between the two. But this is not an example of that, says the Gemara. And Rashi has his explanation because Beishama and Beisel don't explain their reasoning. So he's explaining their reasoning. But that wasn't necessarily the reasoning of Beishama and Beisel. So he's just really a third opinion. He's not really being machria. He's not really deciding between the two of them. Alternative answer is giving in Tosvos. And Tosvos says, that this is a different case because he's a later generation. When do we say Mahriashlishi? If he's of the same generation, but if it's a later generation, then it's basically like a student, and so then it's not considered like a third party coming and deciding between the two. Kamara says that if a person has a case where he has a barrel of wine and the other one is a barrel of honey, and we assume that the barrel of honey is worth more, and the barrel of honey is breaking, he says, if you reimburse me for my wine, then I'll bring my barrel and take in, I'll pour out my wine and take in your honey. And the guy has to pay for it. So the Lord says, am I? But why does the guy with the honey who agrees to it, even though he agrees to it, why does he have to pay? Why can't he say, I was joking with you? I didn't mean it. Tanya, didn't we have the following case? Let's say he's running away from a jail. And the Brit and the ferry was going, and he says, "Told dinar, Ravi Rani says, take a dinar." And this is an exorbitant amount. This is what's called surge pricing. This is a big thing right now with the Ubers that you want to do surge pricing. So basically, he says, "I'm going to pay surge pricing for you to take me." And then afterwards, after he takes him, he says, "I was joking with you." Elo el asharo. He actually only has to pay him the regular fare. Uh, so, and this case is different because. The commentaries explain because he really was a mitzvah for him to take him. So, but anyway, there he doesn't have to take pay. Therefore, Alma, Alma, I'm only He's allowed to say, "I was joking with you. I didn't mean it." So the Gemara, Why in this case also, 
And I'm also claim, listen, I was just joking with you. I didn't really mean to to pay that full price. Or, or so to hear he could say, I didn't mean to pay for your barrel of wine. So the Gemara says, no, hollow dummy, I was safe. And no, our case is actually not similar to the first case, to the case of running away in a ferry, but it's similar to the latter case. But if he says to him, take this dinar as your reward, and then he, uh, and then you, and take me across, then you have to pay him the, the price you stipulated. What's the difference between the first case and the second case? And so Gemara explains, but the second case was talking about a guy who wasn't a professional ferryman. He was at Sayyid Ashola Dagim and Ayam. He was a fisherman. He, his job wasn't to ferry you across. If his job was to ferry you across, then he wasn't allowed to do the surge pricing. But since this guy's a fisherman, he says, then, if Sadatik Fari Bezuza, you cost me my fishing job. So therefore, pay me this extra money because I could have been catching fish here too. The guy is saying, you cost me money because I I had wine in the barrel. So therefore, you have to pay me for it. Okay. Next case. The Mishnah said, Shatef Nahar Chamoro V'chamor Chavero Shalo Yafa Mana. So this case is where he has a donkey and it's very similar to the case of the barrel of wine and the barrel of honey, but this case, both of them have donkeys, and the river is washing away his donkey and his friend's donkey, but his friend's donkey is worth 200. His donkey is only worth 100. He says, listen, if you pay me back for my donkey, I'll save your donkey for you, and he agrees. So then he has to pay. So Gemara says, why do we need both cases? So Gemara explains, Sriha, we need both cases. The Ashmina Kamaisa, if we just had the first case, I would have said, awesome, in that case, uh, in the case of the wine and the honey, he has to pay him for the wine. Why? That where he says, will you pay me for the wine? He has to give him the whole amount of money because he specifically destroyed his wine with his with his hands. But here in this case where the donkey was was basically... He didn't actually destroy his donkey. It was just lost by the river. And maybe we'd say that he's only entitled to his labor feed, but not entitled to his donkey. We asked me unsafe. And if we just had the case of the donkey, I would say, Here it's because when, in the case where you don't specify, he only gets his payment. Why? Because it was being lost on its own. of But in the case of the wine, to be a daim, where he destroys it with his hands, I might have said, even if it wasn't specified, he should pay him back completely for the donkey. And therefore, Tzricha, we need all these cases. We need both cases. So, so tomorrow's daf, by the way, is going to have the biggest, most famous agadat of Rav Kahana in the Shas. But today's daf, you know, we have a dispute or a question that Rav Kahana asked his Rebbe Rav. This is a beautiful case. He goes down to save his donkey. So the guy says, will you reimburse me for my donkey if I'm going to save your donkey? He says, yes, and fine. So his donkey was $100, and the guy, the other guy's donkey was 200 So he goes down to save the $200 donkey. And then the guy who had the $100 donkey, his donkey magically reappeared, or luckily reappeared, meaning it never got ruined. The other guy said, I'll pay you for your donkey. But now his donkey didn't get ruined. So what will be the case? Is he still entitled to get paid for his donkey? I'm away. So Rav said to Rav Ka'ana, Mishamayim Rechim yeah, heaven had mercy on him, meaning to say, yes, he's entitled to his donkey. He's entitled to his donkey. Ki Adar Rav Safra, Rav Ka'ozil, Bishayarta, Ravinu Ahuari, like there was one time that Rav Safra was, was traveling in a caravan, and a, and a lion was escorting them. They had a lion there for protection. Their job was, they uh, they had a lion that was their escort for their caravan. And Kolila Kashada Khamra to Khamina, but they had to feed the lion. So each night one of the members of the group had to give the lion a donkey. Mika Achil and the lion was eating. Kimata Zimni the Safar came time for Safar to give his donkey. Shadowe Khamra Vlaachli. He sent off his donkey and the lion didn't eat it. Shadra Khamra Vlaachli. The lion didn't eat his donkey. So Kadam Rav Safar was Zakhar Bay. Rav Safar said, I get my lion back. Why 
Why did he have to go reclaim it? Nihi dechi afkarei adai te da'ar ye adai te da'ar ye afkarei adai te koi amu He never intended it to be onerous for the whole world, just for the lion. So why does he have to reclaim it? I'm going to Rav Safra or Rav Chum and also Udavid. Rav Safra just did it for just to be um, cover all the bases in case the Nunnix would start up with him. But we see from here the fundamental point that even though even though you had said, I'm going to be reimbursed for my donkey, but now when you got the donkey back, when you got the donkey back, then on that basis, the guy still has to pay. Even though you didn't lose money, the guy still has to pay. So now there's the question of, let's say, insurance. Let's say you have a car, and a guy does $500 worth of damage to your car, but you can put in a claim for your insurance. Does he have to still pay you the money? So that's a machol kesachronim. But, but, but on the base of this Gemara, you would seem to be that even though you're getting your money from someplace else, this guy still has his responsibilities to pay you. What's it, your, what's it his business if you're getting your money back from somewhere else? Or do we say that, no, he's paying you for the loss he caused you, and since you have insurance, you didn't suffer a loss. Bar mine rav mi rebi. So rav asked the question from rebi. Yarad lahatziel v'lohitziel. Another case. Let's say the guy goes down to save the donkey, but he wasn't successful. Mahu. Amr. So what would be the case there? He goes down to save the donkey, but he doesn't actually save the donkey. So does he need to pay for the person for the person's donkey that was lost because he wasn't successful? Amrov Zushe says, Oh, this is a good question. But Angel sorry, he didn't get the job done. So therefore he doesn't get paid. He doesn't get paid for his donkey for his own donkey either. Mara says, What about the following case? It contradicts us. Ace has so far the poll. But we're on top of 116b. One who hires a worker, who avi crew of dormus can can in. He hires a uh, a uh, he hires somebody to bring cabbage or demuskin in the type of uh, meals on wheels, type of uh, um, uh, weed or I don't know exactly herbs to the prunes. They say prunes. Okay. To the sick person, and he found that the guy who brought it to was dead. Or actually, just the reverse. He doesn't need it anymore. No The guy still gets still paid, and even though he didn't actually do the job, so so why in this case is the guy not getting paid for saving the donkey for not saving the donkey? I'm going to meet Dami. He says this case is totally different. So there he did his job. It's just when he got there, the guy didn't need it. Here he didn't do his job. His job was to save a donkey, and the donkey died. So let's say you have a caravan that's going along the wilderness. Uh, and then the bandits come and they attack it. So everybody's got to pay money to the bandits. How do we figure it out? How do we calculate the money? We don't say, okay, there's 10 people here. Each person puts in 10%. No, we go by the bandits are after the money. So we say everybody's got to put in 10% of the money that they have on them. One guy has $100, he's got to put in 10. One guy has $10, he only has to put in one. So you get to the money. But if they hired, let's say, a magic, a guide, then who's supposed to be God? And then there you pay by the by the people, not by the money. Whatever is the minog of the makom, whatever is the custom of the place, that's what you're supposed to do. Rashana Khamar knows, and the donkey drivers are allowed to conditionally stipulate to call Misha Yavid Wokamoro, whoever loses his donkey, Yama Wokamor Acher. That he that that they're going to pay to everybody's going to self insure as they say, and each one they're going to reimburse him or or buy him a new donkey. Because yeah, but if he did it with negligence, imamidin. Then if he did it with negligence, uh, then we don't have then they don't give him a new donkey. Shalom because but without negligence, mamidin well, we give him a new donkey. Vimamar tenuli vani ashmor. He says, just give me the money and I'll watch the money. Ain't showman, well, we don't listen to him. Pshita, that's obvious. 
They said they're going to give him a donkey. They don't have to give him the cash. And the Gemara says, oh, the Isle, Hamara, Achrina. No, he already has another donkey. What's the reason why they want to give him a donkey? Because they they all have to participate in watching the uh, the animals and protecting each other's flock. So they don't want to give him cash. So no, we're talking about a case where he already has another donkey. So he had two donkeys. He's already watching. He's already doing his part in watching the donkeys. No, it's different. He's going to give a higher level of protection if he has two donkeys versus one donkey. So therefore, all you give him back is another donkey. Let's say you have a, a ship walking along the sea, and then and then there was a uh, a storm came to sink the ship. They kill masa, and they had to unburden the ship. They have to throw off the the cargo. Then we have to calculate according to the burden, but not according to the money. Meaning to say. Meaning to say, under these circumstances, you you have to calculate according to the weight, but not according to the value of it. Meaning to say, if one person had a, something that weighed 100 liters of gold, and his friend had 100 liters of iron, even though they're not equal, that's the amount that you put in, because because the weight is the issue. And you don't change from the custom, the practice of the of the sailors. Or uh, and they could conditionally state uh, all the like sailors who share in the docks. They could say, "Whoever loses the ship will get you another ship." But if it was lost with negligence, then we don't give him another one. But without negligence, then we get him another ship. And let's say he goes to a place where the ships don't go, meaning he went negligently. A, negligently, a mami, then we don't have to give him another ship. Pshita, that's obvious. He was negligent. The Gemara says, no. We're talking about a case, let's use the Benisan Merach, Kichad Ashlo, but Tishrei Merach, Kichrei Ashlo. They would go one length in Nisan and two in Tishrei. The Ka'az will be Yom and Nisan and Makam Tishrei. And in Nisan, he went to the place where he typically only goes in Tishrei. So Mazatim, he might have said, Devash Ya Nakit Ma'azo. He might have said, Oh, he just went there out of his typical behavior, but he, um, but so he wasn't negligent. So we don't say that. Tanur Abanan, Shayarta Shayta Malachas Bemidbar. Let's say you have a caravan that was walking in the wilderness. Ma'amad Gaius Vitarfa. And then the uh, caravan's going in the wilderness, and the, uh, the bandits got up and they grabbed a hold of it. Ma'amad Echamayam Vihitsio. But this guy got up. And he saved the property. He saved the money. He was, uh, you know, John Wayne. He he pushed off the bandits. He so emsa, meaning to say, he he said, everybody gets back their property. But Bim Amar Valete says, Ani atzio at me. He says, I'm just saving my own. I'm not. I'm just saving it for myself. I'm going to take everything if I save it. Then he so atzmo. Then he saved it for for himself, and he doesn't. People don't get the property back. And Mar says, "What's the scenario here?" If other people can change it, that if other people are able to change to to save their money, then even when he said, "I'll save it for myself," everybody should get their money back. The people, other people, could save it too. But if other people couldn't save it, if you were then even in the first clause, it should go back to him. We're talking about here, so we're going to give three answers to this question. First answer says, we're talking about partners who could go and zesh, shutaf, choleik, shalowidas, chavero. So, so here we're talking about where they're partners, and we're talking about a partnership who wants to divide up the money and take his share, even without the consent of his friends. So therefore, if he said it, Amar, if he said, I'm going to take it, then Pollock, then he divide up without the consent of his friends, and he could do it. But in below Amar, but if he didn't say it, well, Pollock, he didn't divide it up. And so therefore, now what he saves is divided amongst all the partners. Rav, Rav gives a different answer. Achaba Pollock, and that's, you know, we're talking about workers. A worker could quit even in the middle of the day. But as long as he doesn't quit, he's still considered to be working for the owner. 
and once he quits, time and then the, and then once he quits, uh, then he mean, that means to say, it, it's and then he's not like he's under the owners or the the employer's domain. As it states, you have a right to quit. And so therefore, if he said it, it's an indication he quits and he gets to keep it. If he didn't say it, then it's still the workers and everything, the employers and everything goes back to the boss or whoever owned it. Rashi says, So he could he could have saved it, but only through its great difficulty. So if he demonstrated it, what he was doing, then it's then it's for himself. But if he didn't demonstrate it, that and so then everybody gets to then everybody gets to keep it. So if he revealed it and they didn't say anything, that's an indication that they already gave a pope, and they all they don't want to they don't want to get involved and they don't want to do this difficult behavior. So it says the Mishnah goes all southern Michavero, so up to the next Mishnah. Somebody who steals the friend, uh, field from his friend, how does he steal it? We've seen this already in Baba Kama that either he moves the the boundaries, or maybe he forcibly evicts the person from the property. Somebody who steals the friend, the field from his friend, and then armed bandits come. So, so Reuven steals Shimon's field, and then the robbers, the mafia, comes and pushes uh, Reuven off the field. If this is something that goes on all over the country, that they that these mafiosos come and they just take the property, the Reuven can say to Shimon, listen. This was going to happen to your field anyway. Here's your field. Go get it back from the mafiosos. I have nothing to do with it. My name Mahmasa Gazlam, but if they only came because of the robber, because of Ruvain, then Chayavah Middle Steacher, then Ruvain has to give Shimon another field. So there are two ways, two gears of this Mishnah. Some say it was the word was Matsikin, and some say it was Masikin. So either way is okay. Mandatani Matsikin, the one who has the language of Matsikin, it's not a wrong language because it says, Matsor Matsok. It says in Deuteronomy, Matsor Matsok, meaning to say that somebody who tries to do something bad to you. Mandatani Masikin, the one who says Masikin is not wrong because it says, Yirash Atzotzal, as it states in also in Deuteronomy, right there in the Tochacha, it says, uh, that the uh, locusts will eat it in Targamina, Yachsenine Saka. Saka is a translation in Taramek of the locusts. And so, therefore, they call a robber like a masik, like the locust, because just like the locust, it just comes and destroys your property, so to the robber. So now we said, okay, the next case, we'll, I'm going to stop the recording because we'll, we'll go on a little bit, but this is really for the next stuff.